Stephen, the joy aspect. Can you just let the community, the allies, everyone know, fans of good TV shows, what they're about to get? <laughs> they're about to get some queer joy up to the up to the brim. It is like it is filled with so much, so many big moments that queer people very rarely get to see themselves do, um, like doing on television. Um, we're going to see like amazing drag numbers filled with so much heart and so much emotion. We're going to see car explosions. <laughs> we're going to see uh, sex parties and just like so much unabashed, unapologetic queer joy. Kim Cattrall, Juliette Lewis. Yeah. Oh, you're going to see a lot of Kim Cattrall and a lot of Juliette Lewis too, especially as the season progresses. Haven't seen you around. You a tourist? Nah, I've been in Baltimore for med school. Well, actually, I dropped out. Hot, smart, and afraid of commitment. Every gay man's tired. Hello, Stephen. Hey, how are you? Oh my God, London is basking. If you seen me half an hour ago, I had big curly hair. I've like literally stuck uh, it in a big bun. I heard it was hot there today. Yeah, I mean, we love to see it. Yeah, oh my God, don't we? But you know what's great? We moan about the weather and the rain all the time. And then we get the sun and we're like, oh, we can't deal with it, it's too hot. I'm from Newfoundland. We have a very similar climate. So I'm, I am I know exactly what you mean. Well, listen, um, I had the pleasure of watching your new series yesterday. I watched two episodes. I'm pacing myself because there's so much going on. I'm trying not to binge the whole thing because I feel like when there's so much going on, sometimes you just don't have time to digest each episode when you go yeah. back to back, back to back. So how are you feeling at the moment? It's going to be out soon. Yeah, it's so exciting. I'm so excited for the world to see it. I'm so proud of the show and I'm proud of our team and this like incredible cast. Uh, I'm just so excited for the rest of the world to fall in love with them too. I wanted to read out some of the things that some of your um, amazing cast have said about doing this series. Um, Ryan O'Connell said, I just want people to understand that disabled people are sexy and sexual beings, and we've been denied that for so long. Jesse James Keitel says, I cried when I first read that script because I saw myself reflected. How does it feel to hear like your cast speak like this? I mean, it's it's so moving, and I, I can say like we're, we, we've, everyone has put their hearts and souls into this show like it is it is like tv is such a collaborative medium and um and and i think all of us in this like everyone listed in that that in our writing team and our our producing team and the cast like we've all like we, we we've bared our, our entire souls putting it being uh, like putting this together yeah. um but I, I'm I'm really grateful because you know this show did so much for me uh, growing up. Like it was my first exposure to like queer community. But now, like given how we've reimagined it and to be more inclusive and also accessible, and it, it just like it it's I'm very excited to give and give platform and space to um, you know members of our community that are from like these, this this is my family. Um, that you know that this, these characters are are, ba are not based on, but like a, ref a reflection of, um, and so many of these these folks have never really been have uh, allowed to have their stories on screen, and the power of having yourself reflected, as I learned when I was growing up, it is like a life raft to just to show you that you are not alone out there, that there are people out there like you. I will say Russell T Davis is a bit of a ledge out here. We adore him. He's about to put out the new Doctor Who series, which is so exciting. Um, yeah. Listen, this was his baby. He was ahead of his time. I just want to get an idea of what it felt like for you to go to Manchester, to go and oh see him. Gosh. Can you just give me an insight in what that whole oh, time was goodness. like for you? It was so surreal. Like by the time I like, I found the rights had reverted to him and I just like had my my reps reach out to be like, will he take a meeting with me? <laughs> like whatever. And like, I mean, thankfully, I don't know what he was thinking, but like he did. And like, I, I hopped on the train, but I, in the in the office was the gigantic, Babylon sign, like the iconic, they had, they had kept it, they put it up and I, we had a meeting in this glass room underneath the Babylon sign. And I was just, I felt so like unworthy of being there in front of Russell and Nicola. Um, and like they, they, but they were so kind and they were so, they were so warm and like receptive. And when I came in with like, I came in with a lot of passion, a lot of anger, um, but also like a lot of hope. 
um, for like the queer community right now and like how I, I see us like moving forward through these like really honestly like trying okay. times. Um, and um, it was that kind of energy that I think Russell and I really connected on because I, that's what the show, a queer show needs to be right now. It needs to be fueled by, um, by, by the current landscape of queerness. Was there anything he said like, promise me you won't do this or promise me you will do this? He, there was no, there were no strings attached when, when Russell, um, like Russell really like trusted me. Um, but I was very like, especially early in the process, like I was very, uh, communicative and like I would share drafts of the script uh, with him because before the writers room started I had written two scripts um, to uh, start getting the story going and I would take his notes and you know I would really I would take them to heart and he really like pushed me to make some big character decisions um, and um, and to make the show um, you know, really, really grounded in, in reality. Um, and yeah, his words, like his notes were always so on point. And he was, he, he was just, I mean, he's so smart. He's such a legend. Like I adore him. He's so prolific. Um, it's very bold. It's very bright. It's very horny. It's very unapologetic. It's very stylistic music bangs as well. I love the soundtrack, you know, it just puts me in a mood. But also, um, there's gonna be certain things that perhaps could be triggering and upsetting for people. I think um, with with the first episode and the way it ends, and there being a hate crime, and there being this incident where um, in a drag club, a gunman comes in and shoots people just because of their choice of who they are. It's a reminder that even though the trans or the gay community now are standing up and saying, we're not putting up with no crap, the reality is this is still an issue. Was that the reason why you thought in episode one, I know this is gonna be tough, but I wanna do this because I wanna remind people there's also this side of what our community are dealing with? Yeah, exactly. I mean, this was that was a huge driving force was to reflect the real landscape like Pulse really happened, but not just Pulse, but like Texas and Buffalo like these. This is a reality um, in this country and it is going to be hard to sit with, but it's 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 even harder to know that still nothing is really being done to, to change that. But for me, I didn't want to. I, I didn't want to, you know, as as you've seen from the pilot, we never show the shooting. We never show any sort of acts of violence on queer people. It is solely the aftermath. And then as the season progresses, the, the you know, the recovery period and the and the and the um, the transformation of this community as their lives are turned upside down. But it was really important for me to really focus on on the rebuilding like this is where we start in the in the season but the show is really about how we rebuild how we move forward and how we reimagine these spaces to be more inclusive than maybe they were before that is the driving force behind queer as folk is it's filled with hope it's filled with joy up to the brim um and it's in spite of trauma because i think that is a reality is that trauma and joy come hand in hand if you're a queer person but the but the joy um, is is such an important tool for survival as a queer person, and um, and that is really what motivated the, the motivates the season. Honey, what are you doing here? I lost my keys. Wow, you love a dramatic entrance. Dad is home. <laughs> Then I'm wishing you so much success. Thank you for being daring, for being bold and telling this story and also honouring something you grew up with that absolutely inspired you. That makes me so happy that Russell is like championing you because people want it to be like, oh, this is not the same as the original. You know how they like to try and separate the worlds and to see this coming together is just beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. That really means a lot of us. Even have an awesome day. Take care. How are you feeling? I'm kind of nervous. I've never performed on like a real stage before. I really want this. And you'll get it. Thank you, Mom. Hey, the best way to get over someone is by getting under someone else.